It's going to be a long hike up the side of the mountain. For Cat and Burl Paget, it's an almost everyday matter. They're going hunting for wood. Burl is a master craftsman, and this is their way of gathering materials. It's almost like they have to meet each tree personally. Well, this wheelbar is the only source of transportation that we have. You can't carry enough on your shoulder to afford to make the trip. So on this wheelbar, we can roll about four times as much as both of us could carry. But I think I'm getting the bad end of it. I'm having to pull the wood and the wheelbar too. <laughs> they head for the hills with a specific type of wood in mind, then walk and look until they find it. They never cut a tree larger than they need. Yeah, that, that, that looks like a pretty good one. Let me get this axe and cut it down. I won't let it fall on me. I've cut a many of a tree. I was cutting trees when you was just a little girl. Once it's cut, it has to be hauled back down the mountain. That's where Burl takes over in his workshop. If he takes a mind to make bread trays, he makes bread trays. Can you make these out of just any kind of wood? Yes, you can make them out of just any kind of wood, but I mostly make them out of, uh, when I can find it, some rare kind of wood, like black walnut or wormy chestnut or something similar to that, or poplar is the old original bread tray, yellow poplar. I make a lot of them. Well, how long have these been hanging up here on the ceiling? Most of them been up there about a year now. I try to make them in the cool weather where they won't shrink and crack so fast. They won't dry too fast and they won't crack. And then when they've hung there about a year, I take them down and smooth them off and sand them. And then they're ready for the dough roller. Bread trays are one thing, but how about this monster? A couple of years ago, Burl decided to make a chair so he made a big chair. As soon as somebody saw it, they wanted one. So he made another, then another. Soon the demand was so large that Burl quit making them. You see, each rocker is a trunk from a hemlock tree. And that's one rocker of a rocking chair. Yes. How long does it take you to find two that match? Well, now that's just according to what kind of luck you had. First, I, when I made my first chair, I found one rocker one day, and I put it on my shoulder to find one that would match it, carry it with me. And four days later, about eight miles from there on another mountain, I found the rocker that matched it. There are five different woods in one of his chairs. His favorite is the wormy chestnut. If you ask him about it, he'll tell you that his chairs are his way of remembering the wood. Well, you mean I'm sitting here on the arm of a memorial? Yes, sir. You sure are. That tree died. Uh, I'm sure it could have been already dead, but it died in 32 if it wasn't already dead. Some of them were already dead, you know. They'd get old and defective and die, but we know that they all died in 1932. I feel bad about sitting on a memorial. It won't break. No way. Well, so that's the story. They're making memorials, and you thought they were rocking chairs. In Turtle Town, Tennessee, with the Burl Paget family. This is Andy Johnston. I'm gonna sit back on your memorial. Sit down. Yeah, you're out of here. <laughs>